This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting, proudly sponsored by Boohoo Man. I'm joined by the Misfits main event today, Elle Brook. It's your first main event, Misfits main event, the first ever women's main event on Misfits. Yeah. You're making history. In the big US of fucking A. I know. If there was anyone that was going to be female main, it was going to be me. I work hard, not only in the gym, but out of the gym as well. I get the views. I know how to get the people going. Sometimes I'm controversial, but this is what this scene needs. You want to get people talking. No one likes someone who's just like nice and humble and stays quiet. People like the crazy person who tears his hair out and runs around the room trying to attack everyone. Yeah. So that's, that's me making way. I'm crazy. I've already screamed at everyone in my team. Do you know Mark? drank my coconut water out of my fridge. Oh, really? yeah. Mark Tibbs is a uh, coach. Yeah. And he was like, it's communal. You should have put it in your room. I was like... There's no fridge in your room. I, I, to be fair, I have a fridge in my room. But I was like, you know it's for me. Why are you drinking it? So, no, I absolutely adore him. But that's the things that set me off. So I'm showing you the petty things that are pissing me off. I, I love my team. I do. I don't want to seem ungrateful. But, God damn it, they're going on my last note. And you got your own... Like when KSI and Logan Paul fight, they they get like rent out a massive Airbnb and they have the whole team there. And yeah. you you've done the same thing. Yeah, I know. Misfits have been very kindly to let that uh, happen. Is that like the VIP I main feel, event? That's like a level of prestige, you know, you get to. Yeah. So is it like um, on the Misfits roster? Is it like Elbrook, Logan Paul, KSI? Because we get Airbnbs for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. It's a castle as well. You've is seen it? it. Do you know it's haunted? Oh really? Like um, John was googling the postcode, and it comes up as like haunted house. Wow. I have to come over this week and see, have a look at it. But I like your new, I like the car you're in is sick as well. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. it's like a glorified soccer mom car. But well, it's, it's, like a, it's like a big, like, uh, kind of muscle man car. Yeah, it's a Suburban, by the way, and it's huge. You can fit a whole squad in there and suitcases. We didn't need an extra um, transfer from the airport. Like, how do we manage to do that? It's crazy. Well, you can't have a minibus. That looks a little bit of a nick. Imagine you rock up this in, like, a school minibus. No, because you know the ones we um, had in Dubai? They're yes. quite bougie. Yeah, the, you know, they're, the, like, the, the, converted. Which ones were we have in Dubai? Uh, with, like, the stars and the scenery. It's kind oh, of no. similar to what they Oh, have. sorry, G-Wagon. The G-Wagon you're talking oh, about. the G-Wagon. The one we had from the airport. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bougie. That was nice. I like that. So, apparently, you know, <laughs> minibuses are sad. <laughs> yeah, all the school children are getting on the minibus. It gives me kind of... It gives me flashbacks when I was in uh, secondary school and you're all gonna going on a field trip to another school and you're all in the minibus, yeah. all crammed in. But um, It's quiet today. I thought there was going to be like, has AT been down? No, yeah, I, I think he's coming he's later, later, later in the week. Oh, yeah, this is different. And you know when I, well, I've been in this gym before and I train, they don't have the fans on. They've got fans going on everywhere. I think everyone's really struggling in this heat. This gym is boiling. And you know what? I've learned something from the Americans and how they train, specifically this gym. Um, they train like crazy, whether it's in the heat or the amount of work they do, hats off to them. Yeah, that, I was asking around, I was like, why do we not just find another gym because it's so hot? And they're like, all the American gyms, so all the gyms in Houston are all like this. That's yeah. how they all have it. They have loads of heat. But you know it's hotter inside than it is outside? Because yeah. it's brick, it like insulates it. I'm like, damn, this is... I prefer it cold. Do you know like, um, like Rocky when he's in the snow yeah. in like all the jackets? I prefer to be too cold than too hot. Like the Russian Drago training in, in the Yes, snow. Yeah. that's exactly how I want to do it. This tropical heat beach, water parks, sunbathing. I hate it, but it's going to be good for making weight. How was the water park, actually? You went. The water park was really good. Do you know what? It's only open on weekends. It's not massively touristy, but I've been really lucky to be out here the week before and having so much fun with my team. Like, this is when it gets serious. Obviously, it's the Wednesday now. We only have three more days, then it's in those fight nights. So at least I had a good calm before the storm. And Danny Duncan knows who you are as well. You went to a sh I want to go to a shop. I love Danny Duncan. Yeah, we all got funny T-shirts. This is the most British thing in the world, right? <laughs> we went to the store and there was these T-shirts with like really funny slogans. They turned out to be Danny Duncan's um, brand. Nice, nice, yeah. And even Mark wore like all this and a big dick too. Like Mark <laughs> Tibbs, we got wearing a T-shirt. Mark Tibbs, like, one of the most respected boxing coaches in, uh, I know. in the UK. And we got him basically like, it's something you wear for like a head or a stag do. It's so British, like straight out of Benidorm. But that's what we went to watch straight the, um, <laughs> that's not what we watched the Fury fight. What do you think? think? Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember, I bet 20 pounds. When, you know, Fury got rocked. I then put, I was like, Fury's going to come back, because he always does. Yeah. I, I bet £20 on Tyson Fury for him to win. 
because I've come back was a hundred quid, and I was like, Fury, he's gonna, he's, oh, I didn't, I got so much hate on Twitter. I don't know if you saw or not. It's got about seven hundred replies to the tweet. What? I had Tyson. I said I scored the fight. Tyson Fury one fourteen to Usyk one thirteen. Oh, I gave Fury really? the first. I gave the Fury the first seven rounds, and I then Usyk the, first the rest. The round was on like a bit on the rocks, isn't it? But then a standing eight. Yeah. So that gives, you, that, gives, eight. that gives you two more rounds. Exactly. So what? Did, so that would be even? one one thirteen, one fourteen. Uh, Fury winning the first seven, but then I guess lots of people gave Fury or gave Usyk the first two. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. But I think it shows how strong Usyk is as a fighter that he started strong, went all tits up, and then come back even stronger. Like that is champion, isn't it? What was, it? What was your reaction when it happened? You know what? I thought Fury was gonna win. Yeah. Like big man, small man, <laughs> big man gonna win. I just thought, you know, the good big man always beats a small little man. Yeah, but apparently Usyk, good little man and good big man. <laughs> he's he's, a, he's an all rounder. Like we we got told. Um, yeah, have you ever seen that thing that there's a conspiracy, not a conspiracy, but people think they're doing an inhaler in the corner? Oh, really? You think so? Yeah, have you not seen that? For you sick or for Fury? For you sick. Oh, really? But apparently it was a crucifix. But I looked at it and I couldn't really tell. I was like, surely you wouldn't just do that on national TV with an inhaler. Like, someone would have caught it. And I think you can have an inhaler before the fight, not just during, not during the fight, though. But I thought that if you have asthma, then you're not meant to fight because. <laughs> like me. <laughs> yeah, because it's literally a steroid if you take an, yeah. an inhaler. <laughs> the inhaler technically is the inhaler technically is a drug at the end of the day. It's literally a steroid that like opens your lungs and that kind of thing. Because <laughs> I remember being like, how do I get one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't do inhalers. By the way, just yeah, saying. Imagine. Why has Elbert now got asthma in like two years? I'm like, oh, I've been exposed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. How's it kind of built up over time? And how was uh, Arahawani today? Oh, it was really, really good. Yeah, I think most of his questions were kind of like directed towards Paige. I think right. you know his followers and that kind of thing. He was asking her a lot more um, directed questions about her life and oh, you're not going to do MMA for the, uh, you're going to stop doing MMA now and that kind of thing. Whereas me, it was just more like, ah, so you two are going to fight. You so if she pissed you off, if you piss her off. Right. And then he mentioned like Dylan Dennis and stuff. So. Because Paige is beef with Dylan Dennis, and you get along with Dylan. I know. I know. And he was like, well, do you more side with um, Dylan Dennis on this? And I was like, Dylan Dennis is his own person. Nobody <laughs> controls him. And he knows how to get views. And there's no line in this sport. I think if you're going to influence a boxing, there is, you can't overstep the mark. No. Unfortunately, there it's is no the line. There, there is, is no, no line. Yeah. Because no ultimately, line. you're doing it for views, and that's what's going to get views. Like whether you're made to look good or bad. And the playing ground is kind of equal because you could do the same back. Go, it's a free shot. I know you might look, don't don't want to look bad or something, but then go in a to a professional um, sport rather than the crossover boxing, right? That's true. It's very, very different. Like, if someone threw a table in, in British boxing, they get banned for a year. In influence boxing, you get a pay rise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, you don't literally get a pay rise, but it may, it'll make you a bigger star. It's funny because with every Misfits that goes on, there's new rules. Yeah. Because now you see the Misfits bottles, they have nothing in. They're empty because <laughs> people have been launching them or they won't do a certain set, set up and do the face to face because something's happened. So the longer these cards go on, like 001 would have had so like rogue it'd have been like you know like play it by ear if something goes wrong then we ban it but no rules from the get-go whereas now it's like health and safety now everyone sees me with a mic there's like rules about me with a mic because after hitting aj with them it's like damn it's all part of the game um just a couple more things Congratulations, man. Hey, you. you're going to beat the hell out of that girl, okay? All right, like, you you are the star. Like, you've been putting in work, and that's the reason why you got this far. All right, this is your moment. You best to beat the shit out of that girl, all right? You let her know she ain't shit, and then you the motherfucking shit. Show the muscle real quick. Show the muscle. Beat, beat the dog. Oh, goodness. Oh, I'm about to get out of here before I get punched. Nice. Who's that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You've been here all day. I'm not sure. He came into one of my other interviews. He's got gloves on. I know. I don't understand how he's so uh, not boarding his hot, hot is socks he with off. OJ? I think he's OJ's manager, I believe. Really? So, yeah. oh. he, used be, he used to be Minicon's guy, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. I was literally just like, oh, damn, this, this guy's crazy. Um, there's some more things before we wrap it up here then. Uh, Paige Van Zandt. Yeah. This is kind of the, the, final, the final boss almost. Do you see that? The final? The final boss. What? Boss? What yeah. do you mean? Like... Well, because this is like... Not make or break, but this is like big, big, big time. This is like all the yeah. mainstream media pick us up. Yeah, this is a huge fight. 
And I think straight after my first fight, it's funny because someone reminded me I was doing an interview and I was like, I don't want to rush into anything. I'm yeah. too big for my boots to like start fighting UFC or MMA girls and all this kind of thing. And here I am. It's funny how these things happen. Like it was a big opportunity that was given to me. And I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Like, this is what I made for. This is what I meant to do. Um, I think probably Mams is like, respect this girl taking this fight. So, you know, it means everything to me to win. And that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. How do you think you'll play out differently to the to the uh, AJ Bunker fight? Um, do you know what? I don't think it's going to be as scrappy as the AJ Bunker fight. For the first couple of rounds, it was a bit like, why is this so, like, we're like wrapped up and we don't know exactly what to do. Where it's like, hey, she, she knows how to box. Um, she's going to shape up like a boxer. So, and I'm, that's why I'm used to sparring and having in front of me like champions, like high level pedigree of fighters, amateur, professional. Um, so then fighting someone's influence that's a bit unorthodox is a bit awkward for me. But I've been sparring MMA girls as well, getting them in the mix. So it's going to be really good. I know, it definitely is uh, going to make a few headlines. But it's on the Sunday, you'll see all the MMA pages, all the boxing yeah. websites will be writing about it, which is kind of a new audience for you, which yeah. is great to see. I know, and exactly, it being in Houston as well. You know, when I got told, oh, you know, this fight's in, in America, I was a bit hesitant, I don't know why. <laughs> you know, like, it's just not on your home turf, it's a big fight and everything like that. But then I've got to realise this is my opportunity to seize the moment and to make the moment mine. Like, it's the biggest upset, you know, when I win this fight. Like, I'm the complete underdog, even though I'm the champ. You know, I've been fighting influencers, and all of a sudden I'm fighting someone that's done like UFC and bare knuckle and everything like that. So the pressure's not on me, it should be on her, because, you know, I'm an influencer. And I know we had an interview with Ariel, and she was like, Yeah, but I, I, I think you think you speak low of yourself because I see you as a fighter. I'm an influencer. That's what I do, that's how I make the bread and butter. Boxing don't pay me shit. Doesn't make me fucking shit. Okay, this fight is a little bit better, but I take no money on boxing as fucking big. So, um, yeah, the bread and butter is in OF and everything to do with influencing. So, am I a professional fighter? This is my first pro bout. Would you call me a professional fighter? I oh, wouldn't. Okay. I would. I would. Well, when you're oh, on Boxrec, yeah. I would say you are a provider. I know, but then, like, isn't Umber on Boxrec? Yes. <laughs> no disrespect to Umber, but he is. That was really mean. I was just trying to think of someone. Who watched this as well? Um, is in um, who's the one that fought um, so I'll be for the first time? Oh, Andy Worski. Andy oh, No, no, because that it's only the the US ones. Well, the, the US ones are counted as pro ones. Oh, is, yeah. oh yeah, he fought. So Umber is a pro. Yeah, Umber the professional boxer. That's what I mean, I think it just gets chucked around lightly everywhere. Like you got to see it as face value, really. I'm um, just a couple more things then before we wrap us up. Have you fought past Patreon Zan at all? I know a lot of rumors been shouting about Ronda Rousey. Do you know what? I'd love Ronda Rousey. She's a big girl. But I think after I beat Paige, where do you go from that? I don't think that you can go back to fighting influencers. You can't just take a back step. Um, the future could be in anything. Do you know what? I'd love to fight a professional fighter, but I don't know who who would be good for me with a big name. Well, Paige Van Zandt's perfect, first perfect. of all. Perfect. Yeah, but I mean a, a boxer. Oh. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean. Well, you want someone who's actually got a big name as well and a big draw. Oh. I'm going to be here like, I want Carissa Shield. No, or Katie, Katie Taylor. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, she's big as well. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Well, awesome. Oh, best of luck Saturday. Thank you.